Hey everyone, Dave Greco here again. And uh, first off, I want to say sorry about we haven't had a uh, video to release in a uh, week or two. Uh, probably not going to be able to get videos out on a weekly basis, but I will try to get videos out when I can, uh, when my schedule allows. So thank you so much for being patient. But today I just want to do a quick little video about how I blend. It's actually a question I get a lot more than I thought I would get. And so well, it's pretty quick, pretty simple. And I just want to show you how I handle blending my color and trying to have control over my color as I paint. Uh, this is actually a piece we did on stream uh, last week. So I figured there's still some like modifications we can do and uh, I just really quickly show you how uh, I like to blend color. And first off, we're gonna use my DG underscore main brush that you can find in the description below. It's right here, DG main. And this is one of my main brushes that I use in most of my paintings. I mean, that could change in the future, but right now it's pretty simple. And this brush, I can show you to you real quick. Let me grab a color here. This painting's actually a little lower res. So by looking at this brush, it's like a square brush and it's got a little bit of texture on it, right? Basically, if you can see up here, I keep my uh, opacity and flow at 100%, and I let my pen pressure dictate the opacity of it, right? So the harder I push, the thicker it's gonna get and the darker it's gonna get. So it gives me a lot of bit of control over it. All right, let's see here. I guess basically we, what we talk about when we go from blending is going from one color to the next, right? I do a lot of it manually, manually. So if we want to go from say like, you know, this blue color to this red and you know, getting in between, I definitely, people that see me color pick quite a bit is I start with brush over the colors, right? And you're really doing tons of color picking to fill in the gaps, like a brush, color pick, brush, color pick, brush, and it's that kind of thing. And before you know it, you're kind of just do it with really without thinking. Um, I don't find this process very diffi uh, difficult. Uh, some people use the different Photoshop tools to blend properly, but then like just having like a lightly brushing over it, you have a lot of control of how you want your blend to look. You can always see me color picking, like people that watch me on stream see how much I color pick as I paint. And then basically, you can take these outside parts and you know you can do a lot of cutting, right? You can hold a shift to get a nice straight line, just like that. And that is just like a small little blend right there. So pretty simple. And that's basically how I'll do when I start rendering the piece. It's the same deal if like, say if I want to bring this highlight tone on her cheek, let me bring it over here so it's not behind my camera. And bring it over. It's the same deal, right? I'm lightly brushing over in. And I'll color pick kind of in between these colors. Like I'm not trying to just have this color and then lightly try to get it over here. It's not, I'm not gonna get the nice blend that I want. So I'm letting Photoshop do a little bit of work and find that in between color right here. And then I'm slightly brushing that on. And I'll color pick in between again. And it might seem like it's kind of tedious, but it's really not. And I slowly can kind of cr crest in and fade these little highlights that I like. You know, it's the same deal for all this, right? I can cut in more of this cheek down here, add more light tones right here. And that is basically as simple as it gets. Um, I like this brush because it does have a tiny bit of texture in it too. So you can get some nice little bits of interest in it. It's not just like a smooth airbrush. If I want to get real smooth and I don't want any texture showing, I can just grab my main airbrush. That's in the same uh, brush set that you guys can grab. And then you can do the same thing. I mean, you always want to be careful about getting your painting too airbrushy. But if you do want like something really smooth, you can kind of do the same thing. Just be careful with it. Like I tend to not like it so smooth. I like having, like if we zoom in real here, real quick, you can see a lot of these little, kind of little textural bumps and details that that uh, DG main brush offers. I think that's pretty nice. All right, and the same thing goes up here, right? Like I told you guys before how much I like rendering hair. Um, same kind of deal, I'll go back to that DG main brush. And I'll still just grab these large highlighted sections. And then I'll start kind of massaging the shadows down below the same way I'm color picking in between and just smoothing it over 
Real, real simple. I'll just bring that down. I feel like this brush and other people that have used this brush have uh, told me that they really enjoy working with it as well. And I feel like I just have a lot of control over it. And then you can just go back in and cut the little shapes that you like. That kind of stuff. But I think they might do it, guys. Um, sorry this video is a little bit shorter, but I don't think we needed to dive too much into blending. It's just part of the collection. I just want to get out there and people were curious about it. I did get a lot of private messages about blending and going between colors. Some people have trouble getting that kind of like smoothness or that total control over their blends that they want. And mine's pretty simple, but it's a lot of color picking in between and massaging it. And then I let my uh, pressure sensitivity uh, do a lot of the work for me. But thank you guys so much. Um, hopefully I should get another video out next week or two and be a lot more in depth. We can tackle something a little, uh, a little deeper. But you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time.